Part 1. Home the Router. Press the All Access the Home button. This will home the router. It needs to do this so that it knows where its current position is relative to the machine origin. The marks that just appeared indicate that the homing was successful. You can also home the machine manually. Find the drop down menu located in the taskbar or in the top right corner of the screen. And under the operations panel, you'll see an all back to home option. Select this and the machine will home manually. You can also select the home button on the machine operation panel. Part 3, the machine operation panel. This section is where we can observe feed rates, spindle speed, and the tool number. F is the current feed rate. T is the currently equipped tool number. And S is the current spindle speed. The machining feed rate, the travel speed, and the spindle speed can all be overridden by adjusting the sliders. This will adjust the current speed by a percentage, shown to the left, of what has been set in the CNC file. If our travel speed is set to 5000 mm per minute in the CNC file, it will now be 3500 at 70%. The current position of the router can be adjusted manually using the motion control panel. You can use these direction keys to move the router. In this panel, we can set the type of manual motion. For example, if we're selecting continuous, this will move the router at a constant rate when one of the direction keys is pressed and held. Take a look at the current Y position of the router under the mechanical coordinates at 718 millimeters. When we press and hold the Y positive button, the router will begin to move in the positive Y direction and the number is going to go up. The reverse is true for Y negative. The same is also true for X positive, X negative, Z positive, and Z negative. Selecting one of the numbered motion modes enables stepping motion. With this mode enabled, when one of the direction keys is pressed, the router will move in that direction by one step. Observe, when Y positive is pressed, Y moves by 0.1 millimeters. The size of that step is determined by the number that was selected. The range is from 0.01 millimeters to 100 millimeters, or the custom distances can also be set. Selecting HW move enables the physical hand wheel. With this selected, the normal movement functions are now disabled. Let's have a look at how to actually use this hand wheel in the following tutorial. This first knob controls switching between the X, Y, and Z axes. X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. This knob here sets the distance that the router will move every time the hand wheel is clicked one turn. 0.1 millimeters, 0.01 millimeters, and finally 0.001 millimeters. These two buttons on the sides must always be held down, otherwise the hand wheel won't function. This is a built-in safety feature. Each click of the hand wheel will now move the router in the specified axes for the specified amount. These buttons are the controls for the spindle, vacuum, coolant, and dust hood. The spindle can be turned on by pressing this button and turned off again by pressing it once again. The same is true for the vacuum and coolant. And this final button moves the dust hood up or down. The workpiece origin must be set in the machine and it should match the workpiece origin that has been set in the CNC file. Begin by setting the workpiece origin for the X and Y axis. Move the machine in these axes until the tooltip is above the desired X and Y position.
This position should be fine-tuned using the sleeping motion mode or the hand wheel. The following demonstration will outline how to use the hand wheel to achieve this. We will begin by moving the x-axis into position and therefore need to switch the hand wheel to the x-axis. We will be using 0.1mm steps. The dot pictured is the target for the workpiece origin. Now, carefully move the x-axis into position. We will now set the y-axis origin. Switch the y-axis on the hand wheel and slowly move it into position. Once you are satisfied, we can set the x and y origin to zero in the software. This is done by pressing the x slash y to zero button in the machine operation panel. Once pressed, the current tooltip location will be set as the x and y origin point. We are now ready to set the z height for the workpiece origin. This is done by lowering the tooltip to the correct location. As before, fine tuning should be done with the stepping motion mode or using the hand wheel, and it is particularly important to prevent it from clashing against the workpiece. Enable the hand wheel motion mode and have a look at the following tutorial on how to set the z height. Switch the hand wheel to the z-axis. As before, hold down both buttons. And slowly drive the hand wheel until the tooltip is roughly in position above the material. To prevent the clashing, it can sometimes be useful to place a piece of paper under the tooltip and slowly lower the tooltip until it touches the paper and the paper can no longer move. The resultant Z height will be slightly above where it should be, but for most operations this is fine. Once this is done, press the Z to zero button in the software. This will set the current Z height as the workpiece origin. The workpiece origin is now completely set and you can begin machining. Let's take a look at the coordinate interface to see what happens when we set the origin to zero. Navigate to the coordinate tab and select the workpiece. Multiple workpiece origins can be set, but currently G54 is selected. As we can see, X is set to 200. We press X and Y to zero, only G54 is updated. G55 remains unchanged. In our CNC file, we can specify different coordinate systems and therefore only need to set the coordinates once for different workpiece setups. The Z height or the workpiece origin can also be set automatically, provided there is a surface for us to put the presetter on. Find the presetter on top of the gantry. and then place it directly underneath the tooltip on the surface that you want to set the workpiece origin to. Select floating tool setting under the operation panel. The gantry will slowly lower until the tooltip touches the sensor. As soon as the tooltip touches the sensor, a signal is sent back, and the Z height will be set to top of whatever the presetter is placed on. In the coordinate interface, we can see how the Z height has been updated. 
This completes the first tutorial for the Helena Sign Cut Machine and the SDR Control System. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to check out our next video where we discuss loading, editing, and passing NC files. Feel free to click the link on screen or in the description to check out the machine on our website. Cheers, see you in the next video.